ready to go. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Today we're working on this little Mantis Rototiller. That's a good looking little piece, and its only problem is it's been sitting off in a corner of a garage for a while. And I'm told it sat indoors, and that's promising. So we're going to try to save the carburetor on it and put new fuel lines in it and get her running again. So let's get started. Gotta love the steel choke. They don't make them like that anymore. Okay, let's pull the carb off real quick and see what we got. Gotta hope nothing physically is broken on this one, but I don't think it will be. So you can see the uh, grease and everything and oil from old gas. And the printer bulb's gone. But if you look, this looks like a chainsaw carburetor with a uh, printer bulb attached to it. Pretty different. And now we know there's no fuel in the tank and we're going to have to replace this fuel line. So we're going to go ahead and cut those off. But if you can listen to it. Now that's compression. Okay, I'm going to put this off to the side and let's break this carburetor down. See if we've got inside. So far, everything looks promising. It looks like this will be savable. We'll know for sure once we get a look inside. Well, that's not good. That's a fuel diaphragm. If we can't find a fuel diaphragm, we have to invent the carburetor for it. This thing is really stuck together. She looks pretty together to stay. There we go. Metering diaphragm is pretty standard. Of course, it's, as you can see, it's powdered on us. Completely useless, but it's a standard item, so we should be able to find one of those. Oh, there we go, nice and clean. Okay, everything feels like it's moving okay. So we're going to put all our gaskets here. Now I'm going to run these through the ultrasonic and get, get the carburetor nice and cleaned up inside. And then once we're done with that, we'll look for parts for it. It all looks like new now after a trip through the bath. Love that ultrasonic. Okay, let's get her all back together. First thing we'll do, we'll start here. We're going to imitate the way it came apart. We'll add our metering diaphragm. Put a shiny new purge bulb on it. Now we'll get some bolts started. Just get them in their holes to hold everything together. It's slightly different than your standard issue weed eater carb, even though it is a little two stroker. Okay, come on, guys. There we go. Okay. And they're all sunk all the way in. Oh, sorry about that. No, see, even though I'm using a big tool for this, I'm being pretty gentle with it. Okay, and on this side. Let's mount them up on this. We're going to go gasket, then diaphragm. And done. And we're doing it on this block because it's got the little 
little alignment pins that make it a little bit easier. Now I've turned the throttle out before I put it back together. And the reason you want to do that, oh, she jumped off the pins. The reason you turn the throttle out is so that it's not bumping against this when you put it back together. So it makes it easier to align everything. There we go. Put two screws in place for her. Now a lot of you probably know I'm not a big Zama fan. But this is a really, really old Zama carburetor. Doesn't have the Made in China sticker on it. Okay, let's bring the tiller back up. Now next up on the list is new fuel lines. Now I'm 99% sure that the Echo fuel lines will fit right in here. So let's find out. We have our skinny screwdriver and pop this one out. And I never like doing these. These, these are always the death of me. I've got to say, if there's one thing I've got zero talent in, it's putting the new one back in. Now, notice that I'm not digging into the plastic, because if you do, if you tear the plastic up around this, you'll never get a good seal. Especially on one of these that's on the side. It'll be a perpetual leaker. So when you're pulling it out, you want to pull it at an angle from the side. And if you hit one that just won't pull out this way, then, then what you can do is pull all the fuel lines out. And she'll pull out a little easier. There you go, buddy. You're almost there. Okay, she's 99% of the way there, so we could probably just grab her. And there we go. See, it looks a little rough from just sitting there for years. You can see, it's just not worth having. Inside of the tank's got something that used to be fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, gas tank's all cleaned up. You can see the stuff I got out of it. That's not really gas. Looks like 40 weight fuel. Okay, let's see if this new one will fit in. You said this is off for an echo, but just looking at it, I have a feeling. This, like I said, this is the part that's my kryptonite. Pretty close. No, we're not. Let's grab a screwdriver with a flatter blade so I don't inadvertently poke my way through the rubber. And go there. No, oh, and she's so close. Is that it? And there we go. I tell you, these things are always the death of me. So now we'll pull him back a little. When we get the vent, make sure the end of the vent isn't hanging in the fuel. Let's tuck him up there someplace. Okay, let's get our carb back on. So the nice part is you don't have to wonder. Make sure you've got the gasket on the right direction, and you're good to go. You don't have to wonder if it's the right gasket, because it's the one that came off. Okay, looking good, looking good. We should be able to put a little fuel in this and crank her up. We should. So now our fuel line is going to go, give ourselves a little slack. She goes under here. We don't want too much slack. Our return line, which is a clear line, we're going to pull it out a little bit so it also isn't under the fuel. Oh, 
Okay, that looks good. And now we'll cut her to size. And she, she goes right here. So we'll go right about there. Looking good, looking good. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge holding this thing up and adjusting it at the same time. So we've got the screwdriver on the low. Let's see if we can get her started. Okay, power on. She's primed. She's choked. Now we're going to hold it here. Okay, right about there for the low. Now we're going to switch off to the high. Now for the tricky part, holding the handlebar and accelerating while we adjust it. Oh, that was pretty easy. That was easier than I thought it would be. That's not quite it. Oh, handlebar slipped. I originally thought this rototiller was pretty old, but it turns out that Mantis still uses chrome handlebars to this day, and this one's right around to 2010. Now, they're made by Echo, and we all know that's a good brand name, so I'm not surprised at all that it sounds nice once it's running. So, all you new people out there, if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. It's free, and we appreciate it. So, thanks for watching, and See you next time.